Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 1 Remastered. This is Algaris 115 speaking, and I promised you I'm gonna see you next time in an underground water system. A cistern, to be more specific. We are gonna find all three secrets, get our hands on all 28 goodies. We are gonna kill less enemies than in the previous one, only 34, which is still a bloody lot. We're not gonna use any med packs, and I believe there are roughly five breakaway tiles we are going to break here. Overall, this is a level that is also one of my favorites, not quite as good as Pelas Midas, which I think is why many people remember it not particularly fondly. The other reason is uh, visual fatigue. I mean, yeah, not much you can do with this, although in the remasters they have tried. Let me show you. First of all, remember, we are at our no pistols challenge. So we are not using our pistols. We are even gonna magnum these rats to oblivion. This is the first time we encounter these little guys uh, on ground and not in water, right? So this is really where the size and speed comes into play. However, the damage they deal to us is still incredibly minimal. Let's release two more of them via using this lever over here. We do need to push the block into position. Lara will not interact with it in any shape or form. In Tomb Raider 4, there are levers you can jump to grab and then use your body weight to activate, but not quite in Tomb Raider 1. Okay, and that's it. Uh, by the way, just like uh, the rats in uh, Palace Midas, we can let these little guys nibble us to death, and it will actually count towards the total deaths, uh, one of the 36. So meaning we do need to do it if we want to increase our deaths count. And again, I'm going to include it as a little bonus uh after we finish the level proper. And now I'm once again going to shut up and let you take in the atmosphere of this beautiful place. Okay, sorry for the interruption, but I think it's high time that I tell you guys what is it we're trying to achieve here. Well, first of all, let's just admire the place. This is what it looked like in the original. Grey, green, grey, green. Some shades of brownish, yellow, grey, green, grey, green. All across the room. Look at the light source they've added. It actually makes it feel like an actual sewer system or a water tank. Uh, back in ancient Greece. They put so much effort into the architecture and sort of natural sources of sunlight. I love this place so much and even small pools of water from which the surface uh, will reflect the light back. It's incredible what they achieved here. I really can't tell you how happy looking at system for the first time made me. It's great. But what is it we're trying to achieve here? Well, first of all, the entrance into the tomb of Tihokan is behind multiple closed doors. There's one at the very end which needs gold key, then one over here which needs a silver key, and one over here which also needs a silver key. To get a gold key and two silver keys, we will need to complete two challenge rooms, or theoretically three. One over here, one over here, and one underwater. To reach these two challenge rooms, we will need so-called rusty keys, okay? So there are five keys for us to collect. The very first rusty key is actually on this ledge over here, and I ignored it on purpose, because we're gonna get to it a bit later on. What I'm gonna try and do is show you the most efficient way to do things. 
So let's enter this balcony. And this essentially leads into so-called control room. Inside this balcony over here, uh, ah, he's not here yet, interesting, is a switch. When you press that switch, you will find the entire underwater system flooded with even more water up to the level of the ledges over here. Okay, so we'll be able to swim across. This is essential for us to access the key over here and also the key over here. So this is a gold key, that was a silver key. Uh, both will be accessible either via this door behind the rusty lock or via the underwater pool and this tunnel over here. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Before we do that, however, I would recommend you not press the switch because we will need uh, parts of this area unflooded to complete the challenge room to the left, okay? So, first of all, I'm gonna explain a couple of things, get our hands on two silver key, uh, sorry, rusty keys, complete the challenge room here, come back, flood the place, complete the challenge room here, and then be on our merry way to the Tomb of Tihoken. However, we're not alone here. You're soon gonna get another opportunity to unlock the Au Revoir achievement for chasing Pierre away because he's gonna spawn the moment we cross this threshold and chase us with his pistols, okay? Now, I highly, highly recommend you do not fight back, okay? He should be there, yep. Instead, fall into water here and swim away. This ensures that Pierre will remain here for the remainder of the level or until you decide to chase him away. Why is this useful? Well, because there are two more places where he will ambush us unless you did not chase him away from here, okay? So if he appears in one place, he's not gonna appear in another one unless you have chased him away. That is at least how it behaves specifically for the remastered version of the system level. I have discovered this by complete accident when playing the PS4 version and kind of blew my mind. By the way, do not forget the key here. You can barely see it in the original graphics. It's much easier, but it's absolutely here. It's just gray, so it blends in perfectly. Small rusty key. Okay. Now let's shimmy to the side and it's up to you if you want to take falling damage or if you want to get bitten by the rats. Uh, I'm going to take my chances with the rats. It feels like we at least have some control over the situation. My god, Lara, that was absolutely embarrassing. I did not want to waste more ammo, but we have gotten bitten at least twice. Which, I mean, look at the damage. It is ridiculously small. We're still fine. So, via not chasing Pierre away and falling into the water, we got into plumbing system fought off a couple of rats and essentially got our hands on one of the rusty keys. The other one, if you remember me talking about this area previously, is right over there. We actually didn't need to climb it. And I would maybe even recommend not climbing that pillar because, yep, this guy. He is shooting at us, that moron. So we are gonna get some damage. It's not a perfect foolproof plan because he can still get on that balcony and try and snipe us from halfway across, but it is better than encountering him in different stages of this level, trust me. Anywho, armed with two rusty keys, let's go and complete the challenge on the left first. That's what I'd recommend. Okay, you're gonna have to make a running grabbing jump here. And the moment you unlock it, be prepared to be ambushed by more Harambes. These guys are all over Greece, it is absolutely insane. Okay, there's one, and you know what, I'm gonna try and shotgun the other. Let's see what happens. Oh, god damn it. Okay, well, not quite as good as back in Palace Midas, is it? <laughs> okay, so, very important caveat. You need to climb these ledges, however, the moment you will grab and hold the ledge ahead of you, this one, Pierre will spawn and start shooting and this is what I wanted to avoid because you have to drop down again Take falling damage turn around and chase him away, which costs even more health Okay, but because he's still stuck in the balcony with the switch which controls the water levels uh, He will not appear here, which is awesome. Oh By the way, this is probably the most difficult jump in the game if you want to get those uh, Magnum clips make a step back whilst holding the walk key 
and now swan dive forward and Lara will just about make it. Very stylish, kind of nonsensical that it works this way. What I don't understand is why grabbing a jump doesn't work so that Lara sort of slides in. I tried it many times. For some reason, I remember doing it like that in the original and it working, but in the remastered, it absolutely doesn't. By the way, if you're interested in all the kills, uh, let's get down first and ignore those ledges for now. Oh, Lara, I expected better aim from you. Can we slide our way to victory like we did in the original? Nice! Ah, sliding shotgun kill. I live for moments like these. And another one, and there's the third crocodile. Don't worry, sir. I have not forgotten about you. Lara treats all crocodiles equally. She needs a new handbag. Okay. Lara, soon. You'll have your new handbag. Or maybe not. Maybe I was lying. Instead, you're gonna get your hands on a large medkit. Still good in my book. And there it is. That rat lies in wait. It will not attack unless you approach this place from either direction. Doesn't really matter. So yeah, lots of kills to be had here. A few goodies here and there. Again, you can skip all this if you're not interested in fighting this many animals for the large med pack. And now we should just about be able to make it to the door. The idea here is that you jump to that ledge, then that ledge, then fall down here and shimmy. Well, how about we just go directly for the door? No? I think that's far more reasonable and will save us up some time. So let's make a grabbing running jump and there we go. Nice shortcut, I think. Okay, now this is a nasty trap. Underneath us are spikes. So make a standing jump here. Lara will not hit her head. Oh my god! That red pushed us back into the spikes, so we took some more damage. That is unfortunate. Honestly, whether we live or die all comes down to Pierre now. <laughs> Either sniping us or not sniping us from that balcony. Let's take care of yet another red. There are so many of them here. I know you're there. Come out, please. Thank you. By the way, do not drop into this pool of water. You'll have to backtrack quite a lot if you let that happen. We are actually interested in pressing a lever, which, if this area would be flooded, would be inaccessible, because there are certain levers Lara can interact with when underwater, and certain ones Lara can interact with when on solid ground. If you change that, Lara does not have an animation to interact with them. It's as simple as that. So this is a lever that would have been flooded otherwise, which would suck, and we wouldn't be able to interact with it. That's why we didn't press the switch uh, where Pierre Dupont is. And you know what, I really want to not take any falling damage. By the way, very tempting, but don't dive into the pool down there, okay? You're just gonna set yourself back by a lot of time and have to backtrack. Okay, and the moment we pick up this key, Nothing will happen, because Pierre is stuck on that balcony, but otherwise he would be here shooting at you yet again. So this would be the third encounter with Pierre, but we managed to avoid that quite nicely by making sure he's still in that balcony. Now, we can dive into a series of connecting tunnels. We're gonna swim past this area. You can climb up, the, but there really isn't much to do. There is a lever here. Again, Lara can only interact with it when underwater, so we need to flood this area first and that will open up this door with the second silver key. But since this area is not flooded, we have nothing to do here. Let's get out. And we are going to find ourselves in sort of the central pool where the two crocodiles were swimming in the beginning, where we snipe them off the distance. Make sure to make a sharp turn here to get your hands on the first secret of the level. Again, it really comes down to which areas you explore in what order, but for my run right now, this will be the first one. Just a pair of magnum clips. <clears throat> now, I hope you're ready for this, because we can potentially take a lot of lethal damage from Pierre standing on a balcony, so we want to get to it as soon as bloody possible, and not give that guy any chances. Make sure to climb up, Immediately turn, oh, the health bar is a bad sign, and chase him back, back to Hades with you. Okay, we probably would have unlocked Au Revoir achievement. Anyway, this was really good. We are very quick in turning and shooting back, meaning he tried to run. However, it can occasionally happen that Pierre will stand somewhere behind the railing and Lara will not even aim at him, I assume because of the railing. That happened to me once on PS5. I was not happy. But anyway, we chased him back, only encountered him in this place, 
because we didn't chase him in the very beginning, which of course made our life easier a bit later on. Now, I'm trying to kill these rats. There's another one swimming over here. And remember, in the very beginning, we dropped into this tunnel and sort of swam across. This is where we got our hands on the first rusty key, okay? We wrapped up our business there. We no longer need to do anything. Now, there are two openings from which we can shoot the rats. But it takes a while for them to really properly start cooperating, unfortunately. If you have the patience for it. Maybe some of you are not interested in all the kills. Oh, we did it. Nice. Two shots from Magnum Zoli took. Awesome. You know what? I'm going to leave the switch alone for now. I first want to show you all sorts of goodies that are here. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do it like this. First of all, on the ledge over there should be a large med pack and shotgun shells, which we definitely need after our last encounter with Harambe's friends. Okay. And on the other side is a ledge with a small med pack, and on top of it, above it, is entrance into the second secret, or first, depending again on which order you tackle things. Okay, can you grab it, Lara? I guess I need to make a step forward first, almost. Probably if we were just jumping, uh, standing on one place, she would eventually grab it. Since she's nudged forward little by little. Okay. And there it is, the secret chime. So we have two out of three secrets now, and the third secret isn't really that far off. We get to really explore more of the plumbing over here. No need to make a grabbing jump, just standing is fine. If you time it well, Laura will jump here. Depending on your positioning, she can actually grab both of these uh, shotgun shell boxes at the same time, but it's a bit tricky to pull off. And now, unfortunately, I don't really have a good advice to give you to minimize the damage over here. Maybe... <sighs> okay, I risked and it didn't work. I was really trying to land on the ledge over here to take no damage. Instead... We took way more damage than we would have if I was to do nothing. Yeah. So maybe don't try it. <laughs> Just let Lara fall and take some minimal damage. Oh well. No pain, no gain. So let's press this switch. And we might have just flushed down the world's largest toilet by the sound of it. It is pretty epic. So where we are right now is again the central area, but this time... Ah, can you see this reflection of water on the surfaces? This was not here before when the water surface was much lower. This is really amazing. I like it a lot. So now we flooded the whole place, meaning we no longer need to do any kind of complicated platforming to reach the door over there. Okay. And you're soon gonna see the reason why we wanted to flo flood it. Well, one of the two reasons. Because in that pit below are spikes, okay? Now, it doesn't mean we needed to flood it uh, to make it safe. By the way, you can swim through spikes, nothing will happen to Lara, miraculously. You can, of course, safety drop into a corner and continue. And then drop here and continue on. And then even uh, pick up a small health pack in the tunnel over here and continue on. But I find it way more convenient in terms of minimizing damage, to do it right here, right now. So let's pick up the golden key and immediately swim to any ledge possible because this should trigger the appearance of a third crocodile. There he is. Whew. Okay, close call. Sometimes the crocodile will be inside the door as you're picking up the golden key, which as you can imagine is pretty damn stressful. So now, in our inventory, we possess silver key, gold key, but remember, we need two silver keys. That's because we haven't grabbed this one. Can you think of a place we haven't fully explored? If you remember, there was that one underwater lever I showed you that we were not able to access. So now, if we swim back into the central pool and the series of connecting tunnels, we will find ourselves in the area where the water surface was too low, but this also has been flooded. And now, as you can see, we can interact with the underwater lever, which is simply amazing. Okay, and we can grab the key and be on our merry way, or get our hands on goodies and kills, of course. 
Okay, I was lucky this time because Lara usually after climbing up here, she'll always prioritize shooting the red in the distance over the one that's right under her nose. I do not know why. I'm glad she decided to do it the proper way. Otherwise, she would have gotten bitten. Might have gotten boils, the plague, explosive diarrhea, none of the things we would wish Lara to have. Actually, in Tomb Raider 2 Remastered, uh, in, I think, ac spread across three levels, they made an achievement for you not to get bitten by a single rat when there are a lot of, lots of rats in those levels, which makes every encounter with them absolutely nerve-wracking. I like that achievement a lot. Okay, but later about that... Actually, at the time of me recording this, I'm in the process of working my way through a Tomb Raider 2 uh, Remastered on PS4. I have already 100%ed Tomb Raider 1 and unfinished business. There are for, unfortunately some non-functional unlockable achievements that have to do with collecting all the items. But unfortunately, as of right now, they do not work. But in Tomb Raider 2, I have not yet encountered a single achievement that wouldn't work. And I'm halfway across through the uh, underwater levels. So yeah, so far I'm having a great time with it. By the way, interesting thing about this secret, uh, this is really a perfect example of where the action indicators would again come in handy. If you were to find yourself here, the white exclamation mark would appear telling you that this block is indeed pushable. It's very difficult to identify and notice in the remastered. In the original graphics, it was a bit more noticeable because the ledges sometimes blur with this block, okay? But yeah. You can absolutely enable the action indicators and it's going to make spotting things like these way easier. I, again, I can't recommend them enough if this is your first playthrough through Tomb Raider, but I'm again going to keep the HUD minimum and turn off all such features just to keep ourselves fully immersed in the game. I guess to an extent this is a let's play and my voice is immersion breaking, but I was really inspired to make these kinds of let's plays back in 2011 by uh, people like Bob the Ferret or Tina von Rotten, a uh, girl from Switzerland, I think, who was making these amazing Let's Plays of classic Tomb Raider games. She had the funniest voice. She was absolutely great, phenomenal. And these people were kind of an inspiration for me to do these Let's Plays. So that's why essentially they still have this mid-2010s uh, style with minimum editing. Because I don't want to take us through the experience. I just want to be a guiding voice. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. And now we're going to enter the golden key. And you might be wondering, is the tomb of Tihokan finally behind that door? I mean, it was guarded by bloody everything. And well, if you'd be playing Tomb Raider Anniversary, the answer would be yes. But not in the original Tomb Raider. Uh, we have a lot more work cut out for us. First of all... There be lions. Let's take them down from safety. Lara, not only will you get a new handbag, you will also get a new rug. How is that? Now there are five breakaway tiles, completely optional, but we want to break them all in every single level. Oh my god, no, it's too late! Ah! Just kidding. There is a small health bag actually tucked away in this pit, which I find to be an ingenious hiding place. All the others have spikes in it. It is pretty damn funny. Uh, and now let's press this switch and immediately climb up and get your guns out because Lara, more carpets and rugs for you. Okay, and the final one. Perfect. So this is how you can dispatch them easily. However, it's a bit of a subverted expectation because you're thinking you press the switch and a level exit is going to open. That's not the case. Level exit my friends, is behind this very block. But we have two more kills and three more goodies to collect. So instead, I'm going to push this block all the way to the door that just opened. It really is a bit annoying and it is the only way. But this will enable us to get high up on the roof of this room. And then we are going to encounter two more rats and a couple of goodies, okay? So anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what do you think about this level so far. I know that it's very controversial. Many people love it. Many people hate it. I'm amongst those who love it. Uh, I think when people dislike it, it really is because of the visual fatigue. Because, well, it's not much of a looker in the original graphics, is it? And they really did a great job, I think, in the remasters by adding pools of water, water reflections, shafts of light, that sort of thing. And again, it's a central hub area, 
with connected dungeons to the side, each sort of locked behind a certain type of key, right? I love this stuff, and yet it still manages to find ways to loop in on itself. Okay, now in this room, now that it's empty and devoid of lions who somehow didn't starve to death, we have a switch. The moment you press it, all you'll find that happen is that the door over here closed. There is no point to press this switch, none whatsoever. But I just can't leave a switch unpressed. Now using the block, we can get up here. It is not a secret, but it is a couple of kills and goodies fairly secretly tucked away, in my opinion. And you are going to get your hands on large health pack and more magnum bullets. We need them, really. Since I decided not to use pistols, we really are running low. And Pella's Midas and also this level are really not shy about throwing enemy after enemy at us. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you now exit down, you will not be able to return back to this roof. And you know why? Because I, being an idiot, have pressed the switch and therefore closed this door. However, what if we just press this again? Will this enable us to come back? Oh, okay. Why did I never think about that? Well, there you have it. And the switch doesn't need to be pressed to reveal the level exit. This is revealed the moment you move the block out. So you can essentially ignore this switch and the lions and the reds and the pickups all together. And that, my friends, is it. So uh, let me just check if we have everything. Great. So I can absolutely make a save here. Let's do that. Uh, the one and only save of the system level. We did really great in one go. And let's take a proper look at the final stat screen. So there we go, 23 minutes, 3 out of 3 secrets, 28 goodies, 34 kills. And we have broken all 5 breakaway tiles. We have not used any med packs, we didn't even save in the level except for the level end save. Awesome, this couldn't have turned out better. Except for me messing up that one jump leaving secret number 2 because I was too cocky, but you can learn from my mistakes so that you do not <laughs> do the same thing in your own playthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we have one more thing to address in this level, however, and that is one unlockable death. You probably already know what it is, but regardless, I'm going to see you in a sec in the main menu. Okay, here we are. Now, for this one, I'm actually going to use our Palace Midas save, because I want us to find ourselves at the very beginning of the system level, because, of course, the one and only unlockable death here has to do with our l little furry friends. Ah, uh, oh, there's one of them. Now you can absolutely let this little guy chip your health away little by little, but you would, I'm not exaggerating, you would be here for at least five minutes. Instead, let's make it to the other room and all the way to the switch with this block, so that we can summon the rest of his friends and the three of them can at least have a cute little feast. Or they actually start attacking and not running around. Well, this is inconvenient. Okay, please go ahead. I'm not gonna interrupt you. I wonder if this is gonna turn out to be a great screenshot. We'll see. Do you see what I mean? This taking ages? <laughs> okay, almost there. Yeah, not gonna make much of a screenshot, but there you have it. So this was the 25th unlockable death and the only new one pertaining to this level. No other achievements to unlock here whatsoever. So hope you guys had fun. Oh, and by the way, uh, given the uh, very positive feedback I have received, I have decided to open up a Patreon account. So in case you guys found this video useful and are looking for ways to support me, feel free to check it out. I have included a link in the video description. Really, you it already helps that you're watching my videos. I hope they help you in turn. If you do decide to support me, ultimately all that's gonna do is me doing more of these videos more often and spending more time with each, increasing the individual quality. But I'm gonna make videos regardless. So <laughs> I really appreciate you just watching the videos. Uh, if you're interested in more, stay tuned. And I'm gonna see you next time in the actual Tomb of Tihokan, the final level of Greece.